Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 24, and today's node is the Crowd Motion Path Stop. Inside of Houdini, at the stop level, we can go ahead and drop a Crowd Motion Path. When we place this down, you'll see that it has a single input, and that's just requiring an agent. Now, to actually set up an agent, there are a couple of ways. But I think the most useful way for me to show you would be with a custom agent that you set up for yourself. So let's just go ahead and use an FBX character import over here. With this, we're just going to grab our own animation. This has a base shape and a skeleton. So we're going to go ahead and use the agent from Rig. Over here, we're going to grab the skeleton into this. And all this is doing is preparing our skeleton to be used as an agent. You can see over here that it now packs it into an agent geometry. Then we're going to use an agent layer so that we can reapply our base geometry. So we plug this in over here to first input, and then we take our shape into second input. Right over there, it's been reapplied. If you want to change the name of this agent, you can go over here to agent name. I'll just call this one generic agent. So we have our one packed agent. What we want now is to just apply an animation to this. So we can use an FBX animation import. I'm going to go ahead and just grab the strut walking. If we take a look at what it is, it's just a few frames of this character walking in place. So this is what's known as an in-place animation. As the animation plays back, this character doesn't actually move. All of their locomotion needs to be contrived. So we're going to use a transform over here. And all I'm going to do is just move this forward in Z space by some amount. So we're going to use 1.2 times at a time because the average walking speed is about 1.2 meters to 1.4 meters per second. So we just have that over there. Now we can take this and convert it into a motion clip because we're going to need a motion clip if we're going to feed it into our agent. So we set it as motion clip and it just takes the relevant frames. Next, we're going to use a motion clip extract locomotion. Just take this one over here, plug this in, and we don't actually need to do anything with this. All it's doing is it's taking the locomotion from this and storing it in a locomotion joint. We can then use an agent clip. With this agent clip, we take our agent and then the clip that we want to apply, and then we can apply this clip. But we should give this clip a name first. So all you have to do is go back up over here and you can just enable a new clip name. I'm going to call this walk. Right, so this one over here is going to be our walk clip. All the way down here, back at our agent clip, we're going to go down to the bottom where it says input and just change this to motion clip. That's going to call for the second input and then we just call for the clip that we want, which is walk. Over here, we can set our current clip and we're going to set it to walk and you'll see that it doesn't play back, but the pose does change. To play it back, just enable clip time and you'll see that this walks forward. However, it keeps resetting and the actual position of our agent isn't changing. That circle at the base is the actual position of our agent, right? So we want that to move along with it. To do that, we need to actually tell it which joint is responsible for the agent's position in space. So we go over here to the locomotion node and just choose the joint. So for the Mixamo rigs, it's going to be hips. And then we also choose this for the orient. Over here, we go down to the bottom and say convert to in-place animation. And then if we play this back, the agent is just walking in the same spot but our locomotion has been saved and we can now use it when we put it into our crowd motion path. When we plug it in, it'll generate this line. This is a crowd motion path. This is the path that has been interpolated from our agent clip information. So it's taking that walk animation and it's just moving our agent forward. How does it know which clip to use? Well, it's just defaulting to the one that we've set over here. So we set the current clip. If we switch this off, you'll see that it's just in T pose, but on the crowd motion path over here, we have the clip assign, we can go over here and just choose the actual name of the clip that we want. This is just useful if we have more than one clip coming in. So we can just set that to walk. But this is just one agent. So how do we get more? For this, we use a crowd source. So over here, we plug the crowd source over here. And this generates a bunch of them. And then we have the crowd motion path, which generates their parts. But now they're all perfectly uniform, right? They're all walking in sync. And so we need to change that up. The first thing that we're going to do is on the crowd source over here, go to randomize and randomize clip time. This is just going to randomize the offset, so where along their animation playback they are. If we push this up, you'll see that each one is in a different stage of their animation. Then on the crowd motion path, we have the clip speed over here. This is just how fast it's going to play back. We can set varying, so each agent walks at a different speed, and then this has a variance of 10%. If we change this to something like 100, you'll see something interesting, and it's going to be really obvious what's happening. Some of these paths end up much longer because some of them are walking really fast, but then we have like this guy over here who's in super slow motion. So this is a way to add variation. We can drop this down to something reasonable like 20%. Now that we have these paths, there are loads and loads of things that we can do. If we take a look at motion path over here, you'll see we have a bunch of options. I'm going to go through as many as I can, but any that I miss, feel free to experiment with them on your own. So the first one that we're going to look at is just the crowd motion path follow. 
So we take both of these inputs and then this requires a path. So all we have to provide is a curve. So you can use any of the curve options. I'm just going to use curve Bezier, plug this in over here. And now let's create a path for some of these agents. So we're going to add that path over there. So now you'll see that all of our agents paths have been adapted to this new curve. So they'll all try and follow that curve. If we have more than one curve, so let's add another one, they'll just follow the curve which is closest to their starting position. Right? So you see we can have them walk in two different directions like that. There are more settings on here for actually controlling their movement. You can define curve groups, you can define matching by attributes so that certain agents move along certain curves. We also have options for things like smoothing so that we can smooth out their movement along these curves. Let's say that there's an obstacle in the path of these ones on the right. We can do that. Let's use an avoidance. So crowd motion path avoid and let's put something in their path. As you can see it already changes their paths and that's because what it's doing is it's detecting any neighbors that it might interact with. So over time it will adjust to make sure that none of these agents walk into each other. This isn't actually technically collision because this isn't a simulation. All of this is evaluated at the same time. All it's doing is adding a sphere and then moving the paths apart if those spheres come too close together at any point in time. So you can see that as we increase this, you'll start to see where these points intersect. So we don't have to use neighbors if we don't want to. We can use an object. So into the third input over here, I'm going to grab a rubber toy and a transform, template these, and just move Flippy into their path over here. So we plug this into the obstacles input and you'll see that all of these paths now get adjusted to avoid Flippy. You can choose what sort of distance is allowed before they actually avoid and you can bring that in closer. You'll see that all of them start to kind of gather together and that's where those neighbors are going to become useful for kind of sorting that out. So we have all sorts of settings for how they actually interact with this object and so we can just set this like that. If we play this back they'll now walk around the object. Now the next thing that might be interesting is if they approach this object let's have them do something right. Now to do that we have to use triggers and transitions. So the first thing we're going to look at is a crowd motion path trigger. We plug this in over here, two inputs and over here we just have to choose what the trigger is going to be. We want this to be a proximity based trigger so we go over here to object distance and what this will do is when they approach a particular surface which is defined by third input then they get added into this trigger group. So just plug this in over here. You'll see that only that one is getting affected. Increase the distance. So anything that falls within those orange dots is going to be added to this trigger group. We can rename this to distance trigger. Then the next thing that you would do is use a transition. So that's going to be a motion path transition. Plug this in over here and then all we do is choose our trigger group. So distance trigger and then a secondary clip to transition to. Now we don't actually have a secondary clip so we can add one if we want. Go up to the top over here, click and drag this over to add a new one. We're going to just add this swing dancing. I'll rename this clip to dance. Remove the transform because this one actually has locomotion built into it. You'll see over here that it's not an in-place animation. The character moves forward and then backwards. We then just duplicate this agent clip over here, plugging in our new animation. And all we have to do over here is just change this name from walk to whatever we named it, which is dance. And if we go over here, we can now set this to dance. And you'll see how this character now dances in place. Remember, again, the locomotion is being extracted and so it can be applied in our crowd motion path. So let's just plug the one agent clip into the other and we now have access to both the dance and the walk. We plug that into our crowd source and down here with the transition, when they approach Flippy, let's make them dance. So we have the distance trigger that we set up and all we need to do is now just say use the dance clip. So you'll see it changes their paths because they go into this dance loop when they approach this. So if we play this back, we'll see what happens. They walk here and then they start dancing when they get close. Now we don't really want them dancing menacingly forever. So let's go ahead and transition them back out of that animation. All we're going to use is another trigger. Crowd motion path trigger right over here. This one is going to be time based but we're going to combine it with a trigger. We're going to use a subtraction with the distance trigger. Then we rename this trigger to something like time trigger then go back with a new transition so crowd motion path transition choosing our trigger group time trigger switching back to walk and now if you play this back they dance for a bit before returning to walking now you will see we have a bit of an issue in that they no longer respect this crowd motion path avoid and this is where the order of these become important because we're firstly telling them to avoid and then we're telling them to do all of these other things 
And when they return, they no longer avoid it. So it's better to actually include this at the end. So we go all the way to the bottom over here and just do our avoidance at the end. Right? So now they'll walk, dance, they'll avoid each other, and they'll avoid the rubber toy. If you want to affect one particular path, you can use the motion path edit. And then let's just switch to our transform handles. And then let's just say this guy over here wants nothing to do with any of this. He's just going to move that way. And we can adjust his curve just like this. So it maintains the length of the curve, but you can change the direction. So if we now play this back, we have all of them walking this way and that guy just walking off over there. The last thing that we need is just an evaluation for this. So we use the crowd motion path evaluate. And the reason we use this is because of what these outputs actually are. We can't use either of these outputs as is. If we take a look at this one, it's just our paths. And if we take a look at this one, it's just our static T-posed geometries, right? All of our agents. So we need to evaluate them over here to combine them. And then we can use a null. And this over here is our output, right? So this over here is what we might render. I just want to show you something cool. And that's that we can still use all of our other agent tools, right? We have the agent look at, we have terrain adaptation, but let's say we use look at as an example. If you drop an agent look at, you'll notice that it doesn't actually work. Right, so you'll see the sphere over here. And the whole point is that these agents are supposed to look at this object, right? They're supposed to look at this point, but none of them are doing it. And that's because we haven't actually prepped our agent. So this is just a little bit of a bonus thing if you are interested in doing this. Go up here to your agent layer. And just after this, we can use an agent prep. This agent prep is used for conforming our joints to what the agent tools expect from us. So over here under torso, just add this. And for each one of these, just choose the relevant joint. For hips, it's going to be Mixamo hips. For lower back, it's going to be the spine one. And then for the head, it's just going to be the head, right? So you'll see that it adds these three markers. That's how we know that it's working. And then we can go down here and the agent look at will now work. You'll see that they're all looking at that point. And you can also make this an object. If you make this an object, we could do something like this, where we just use a null and make Flippy our look at object. You copy the path of this, control C, and just paste it in here. So now they'll all look at the object as they walk up to it and start dancing. Right, so that's super weird, but they all just look at it as they start dancing. Okay, so that's the crowd motion path tool set inside of Houdini. The cool thing is you can still take this and put this into a crowd solver and solve for collisions and for ragdolls. But this is just the basics of how we can use this to generate non-simulated crowds. And of course, this is all procedural, so you can increase your crowd sourcing. The only one that we'd want to change is our crowd motion path edit because this is specific to a particular point. And there we have it with much more agents. So if you want to download this weird file, it will be available down below. And you can take a look at all of the different tools and how they're used. And then you can also just import your own geometries. You'll need to replace this one over here with a base geometry, this one with a walk animation, and this one with optionally something like a dance animation. So I'll clean up this file and it will be available for download. Thanks for watching. The next video is going to be for the final week. And the first thing that we're going to be looking at is just the lab's simple shapes node. So I'll see you tomorrow with that video. Bye.